Hey guys, today we are talking about inflation, what it is, what it means for you, and what it does to your investments and your wealth generally. Let's get right into it. First off, let's start with a definition. Inflation is the increase in price of goods year over year, otherwise known as the decline in purchasing power of your currency over time. It's basically a quantitative measure of how much more or less your dollar can purchase on an annual basis. Typically, it's reflected with a basket of goods. You take a basket of goods. What did it cost last year? What does it cost this year? You look at the increase in a percentage amount, and that is your inflation. Historically, the central bank has tried to keep it around 2%. That's the target rate. Anywhere from 1 to 3 was kind of a win. But in the late 2021 and 2022, we saw those numbers accelerate dramatically into the 5, 6, 7% range. Basically, when you have inflation, it means that your dollar buys less than it did a year ago. And the percentage is the percentage and decrease in purchasing power of your dollar or the increase in cost of the same goods. And you can't just take a look at one or two goods or commodities or services to look at inflation. To really look at and understand inflation, you need to look at a basket of goods, a basket of goods and services, not just one or two things, because some things might go up a lot more than others. We saw used cars appreciate a ton in 2021 but maybe some other resources or goods were increasing less. So you need to look at the entire picture. What happens in times of increased inflation is that your dollar buys less and less. When your dollar buys less and less, it means that your cost of living goes up. If your salary doesn't go up by an equivalent amount, you end up in a, in a negative position. As a consumer, you then need to either cut some spending. If you cut some spending, the companies get less earnings, less earnings, less jobs, and the entire economy slows down. Inflation is generally not good for the economy overall. Particularly high inflation for a prolonged period of time is generally not good for an economy. It generally leads to a period of reduced growth. So how do we combat inflation? The key measure and what everyone wants to look to is the central bank. The central bank decides the monetary policy. They decide how many dollars to print and they decide how many bonds to buy. Because remember, at the end of the day, inflation is more dollars chasing fewer goods. If there's an increase of dollars that are printed that are chasing the same amount of goods or fewer goods, that's when you get inflation. The more money that's printed, the more we can afford to pay for goods, therefore increase in prices. So a central bank to reduce the impact of inflation will likely do a few things, but one is definitely reduce the amount of money they are printing reduce the number of inflows into the financial or capital markets via bond purchases that are doing. And the third and the big one is increasing interest rates. By increasing interest rates, the central bank is trying to entice consumers and businesses to keep money into the coffers and to spend less, which would in fact keep prices down. The idea is that by increasing interest rates, we're going to put more money in the banks, we're going to save more, and we're going to spend less. And by spending less, that should limit the inflation. All right, there are three main types of inflation. The first is the demand pull effect. So the demand pull effect is fairly simple. There's a ton of demand that exists for a good or a service, and it way exceeds the capacity that we can produce of that good and that service. If you can only produce 100 widgets and there's demand for 150 widgets, the price is going to go up. You guys took an economics course in high school or in university, supply and demand. If you get more demand than the supply can meet, price goes up. That is inflation. Okay, that's demand pull inflation. The second is cost push inflation. Cost push inflation is when the cost of producing those goods becomes so expensive because the underlying commodities or base materials to produce that good has increased. It could also be effect on the service side. So if you have to pay more for your staff than you ever had, then you're going to pay more for your services. Think of an increase in prices of wheat right? So you get an increase in prices of wheat and barley and oats. That's going to lead to more expensive bread. It's going to lead to more expensive Cheerios. It's going to lead to more expensive pasta because they are used to produce that final good. And the earlier raw goods are now more expensive. The cost of those goods goes up. That gets pushed out to you, the buyer. You will pay more for your bread, for your pasta, and for your cereal. 
The third type of inflation is the built-in inflation. This is when prices and wages, they rise naturally, one or two or 3% per year in order to maintain living costs. This becomes kind of a natural cycle, a natural healthy cycle. Individuals expect a raise of one or two or 3% every year. We expect to pay more for a gallon of milk next year than we did this year. It's natural inflation and it's built-in inflation. So how do they measure the inflation? We talked about this earlier. I talked about the consumer price index. Your CPI is a measure that looks at a weighted average of a prices of a basket of goods and services that are our primary consumer needs. They're likely to include medical care and transportation and food and CPI is calculated by taking price changes for each of the items in the basket. It averages out, it's a weighted average and it looks at it as a whole. The other measure of inflation is the wholesale price index, otherwise known as WPI. This takes a look at goods before they are sent to the retail level. This is likely to include prices of raw goods instead of finished goods. Now, how do you measure inflation? Talked about it earlier, but it's fairly simple. You look at your final CPI index value, you divide it by your initial value, and you multiply that by 100, and that gives you your annual inflation. So every year, if you have money sitting in the bank and it's not earning anything, you are losing purchasing power to the tune of the inflation rate. If inflation is 3%, you're losing 3% per year with your money sitting in the bank. That's why you'll often hear that stocks are a good hedge against inflation because hopefully your portfolio is growing at 8, 10, 12%. And that is a good hedge against inflation because as prices are more expensive, some of those companies are able to benefit from the increase in prices and pass on those to you, the stockholder, as a dividend, perhaps, or as an increase in the value of the shares. Another good hedge against inflation are real assets. Real assets could be real estate, infrastructure, and can also be commodity-based investments. Anyone who's on a fixed budget or a fixed income and has a portfolio of traditional GICs, term deposits, or in a high savings account is likely to be the most impacted by high inflation because they're not getting much in terms of returns on their portfolio, but the cost of living annually has gone up dramatically. So if it increases by 5% for you to live year over year, and you made 1% or 2% on your investment returns through a portfolio of term deposits or savings account, you're losing money and you're in a net negative position year in, year out. That's why it's very, very important to consider inflation when you're building your financial plan and your financial projection. It's something that we take very seriously here at the Tatro Group. And if you'd like to book a, a no obligation chat to talk about this or anything else that's on your mind with respect to your investments or inflation, please go to www.speaktorob.com. We'd love to book that chat with you. And by the way, guys, take a sec to like, subscribe and follow. We appreciate you taking the time. Don't forget to give us your comments below. We'd love to hear from you. I'm Rob Tatro from robtatro.com, Senior Portfolio Manager at Canaccord Genuity Wealth Management and the Tatro Wealth Advisor Group. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next video.